The Chicago business scene is as diverse as the city itself, but we don't always hear from the entrepreneurs who keep the Chicago economy colorful. That's where I come in. I'm Mikai Brown, and this is the Minority Report. You don't hear much about the city treasurer's office, and Stephanie Neely intends to keep it that way. Chicago's chief investment officer, who manages the city's $8 billion portfolio, says her office stays out of the headlines because she hasn't lost any money since she was first elected in 2007. When she's not adding to the $900 million she's earned for the city, Madam Treasurer, though she said we could call her Stephanie, is a parent and an equestrian who's crazy about Rottweilers and Prince. We asked the Southside native for some financial advice for wannabe business owners, the city, and this you gotta see, her younger self. A young entrepreneur may have messed up financially coming up, you know. A lot of young people make mistakes, but they come up with an ingenious idea that they feel can make millions of dollars. Well, they all think that. Well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> but this is a legit million dollar deal. Okay. How can they fix what they did in the past so that they can set themselves up for success in the future. Start today. Get copies of your credit bureau reports. Fix whatever the issue. If there are any mistakes, fix them. Have a plan and disclose it. Say to someone, a potential investor, look, I'm 27 years old. I was financially irresponsible when I came out of college. Mm -hmm. I'm working to fix it. But that doesn't take away from the idea that I have. And this is why I believe in it. And so you just have to be very honest and forthcoming. And that's hard to do. It's sometimes Absolutely. hard to admit the mistakes, but we all make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And as I say to my son, mistakes are opportunities to learn. And so as long as you're not making the same mistake over and over again, it's okay. We all make mistakes. Just learn and move forward. What would you say is one of your biggest financial mistakes in your younger years? And what did you learn from it? Getting married. <laughs> Tell me about that. Yeah, no, that was probably a mistake. Have a prenuptial. I think I feel pretty strongly about that. Absolutely. Whether you have a penny or a hundred million pennies, mm -hmm. you need to protect what's yours because it's your stuff. And it's just stuff at the end of the day, but I do mm -hmm. think you should negotiate when things are good as opposed to when things are bad. So that's the biggest financial well, And no one that. has ever asked me that. Really? And so I'm being very honest. Oh, well, I appreciate your honesty. <laughs> There is clearly a disparity between the multicultural audience and the majority audience in terms of access to capital. Why do you think there is such a wide disparity amongst that? And what can we do as a city to kind of change it? Or what are we doing now? Well, it's difficult to talk about multicultural mm -hmm. because each culture is very unique. From the African American culture standpoint, I feel that we aren't investing enough in ourselves that okay. we believe, because they say this to me, I want a 100% loan. And when I say to them, that's just not gonna happen. Or when they say to me, you know, I went to the bank and they're being racist because they turned me down. I'll go, why they turned me down? And they don't have any answers. So they've got to look at investing in themselves. City of Chicago, if you can give them one piece, one piece of financial advice, what would it be? One, I don't have any financial advice for the city. I think the city is in a very unique situation. We are responsible for providing services. So if we decide to save money that we weren't going to salt the streets today, is that in the city's best interest? So no. I think the city has done really well. We have recovered from the downturn of the economy. We are not a Detroit. People like to say, well, is Chicago going to be a Detroit? No, I do not believe we're a Detroit. We've got a lot of different industry here. So, mm -hmm. you know, Detroit was kind of a one horse show and that's all they had. So we're very focused on cutting expenses, increasing revenues. That's how you balance a budget. And I think it becomes challenging when the, you know, the price of salt has gone from $50 a ton to $200 a ton. But I think that uh, we're trying to weather the storm. The pension issue is big and there's nothing the city can actually do about it. It's something the state has to do about it. And so we've all talked to state leaders to say, you gotta fix the pension problem here. But it's not an easy fix either. So it's complicated. Because there's always peaks and valleys in your entrepreneurial life. What piece of advice would you give them to keep following and pursuing their dreams? Believe in yourself. And that's a broad statement because mm -hmm. believing in yourself means you're investing in yourself, you're becoming better. And so if you're not good at the technical side, you become better. You're not afraid to look in the mirror and say, this is my weakness. And so I went to the University of Chicago Business School, not because I wasn't good in math, because I actually was good in math, because I knew people were going to look at me, an African-American woman, and go, she's not good at math. Mm -hmm. And so when they see my resume, they go, well, at least she can add. 
because she went to the most technical school there is. And so address whatever your personal weaknesses are or what you think people are going to perceive as your weakness. You know, I tell people how you look, how you brand yourself, mm -hmm. what are you trying to sell? Are you trying to sell intellectual or are you trying to sell cool? Because when you go to a club, cool works, but you're trying to get me to invest in you, cool might not work. Right. And so you gotta check that ego and say, this is my goal, I'm willing to make sacrifices. I've gotta show the world that I believe in myself.